This was it. We were finally going to confirm whether or not our little one was a girl or a boy, for sure. It was time for the anatomy ultrasound. Welcome to the DeConta channel, where we discuss all things educational and we never duck away from difficult topics. So what exactly can you expect at your anatomy ultrasound? Well, first things first, you need to arrive to the ultrasound with a full bladder. The reason for this is so that your ultrasound technician can see your ovaries and your cervix more clearly. They need a full bladder to be able to check on your organs first. But don't worry, you won't have to hold this throughout the entire period of the ultrasound. Just let them know that you really need to go pee and they will let you get up, empty your bladder, and then come back for the rest of the exam. So what is the process this time around? It's gonna be quite a bit different than your first ultrasound, which involved that wonderful vagina wand. I'm sure you can sense my sarcasm in that wonderful part. But unless you have some kind of extenuating circumstance, you aren't gonna have to worry about the uh, vagina wand for this ultrasound, and you'll just get to enjoy the experience of getting the warm, jellied up belly and seeing your little one on a big screen. Once you're in your private ultrasound room, your technician will have you lay on your back, roll up your shirt, and they'll squirt some warm jelly on your belly. And then they'll probably turn off the lights or at least dim them. So be prepared for a darker room, not quite like what you see in the movies. Then after that, they'll take the ultrasound belly wand and stick it on your lower abdomen in lots of different angles and pressures to try and get the best images and views of your little one. Now the technician is going to be taking a lot of time making sure that everything's A-OK -okay with your baby. This also means they're going to be taking a ton of pictures, of course. So also don't be alarmed if the technician spends what seems like forever looking at your baby's heart. This is totally normal. Now I only say this because even I was starting to get a little antsy when the technician was spending like 15 minutes just looking at my little girl's heart. It started to make me panic and wonder, is something wrong? They're not saying anything. Should I see something on the ultrasound that they're seeing? Is something wrong with her heart? No, it's totally fine if they spend an obscene amount of time taking pictures and looking at your little one's heart. There are four chambers to the heart after all that they do have to check on. They'll also be checking on all of your baby's other functions, like the blood flow into and out of the umbilical cord, their heartbeat, their stomach, their spine, their hands, their little feetsies, and even their brain. So it's also important to keep in mind to not be alarmed if your technician needs to put a little extra pressure on the belly wand or wiggle it around, especially if your baby is not cooperating and they need to make sure that they can get the best angle and view of whatever it is they're looking at on your baby to make sure that it is functionality A-OK. -okay. But if you are concerned with the pressure they're putting on or the jiggling they're doing, don't be afraid to speak up and advocate for yourself either if it makes you uncomfortable. Now the other thing they'll be checking on is how much amniotic fluid is in there. According to my technician, they're looking for between two and eight centimeters of amniotic fluid. I ended up being right around four centimeters, so we were all good in that category, almost right in the middle. What I also found particularly interesting in the anatomy ultrasound is that they don't actually measure the length of your baby after the first trimester. They take a bunch of other measurements to basically come up with an average idea of the size of your little one. So what she did measure was the head and belly circumference, the femur length, and the head width for a general idea of baby's growth progression. So all of those averages you see online that are comparing your baby's uh, weak gestation to like fruit or candy or some random cute animal or video game, are just averages. They're not actually based on ultrasound measurements because we don't measure from head to foot after the first trimester, or even head to butt. It's taken by those other measurements for an average idea of how big your baby is. While getting to see my daughter on the anatomy scan has me on cloud nine, what else has week 19 of pregnancy felt like? Well, it's been rather stressful this week, actually, quite frankly. I've been experiencing some excruciating hip, knee, and some horrible foot pain. My right foot even has some slight swelling on it at this point. 
all of this added pain is disrupting my sleep even more than it was already disrupted. And that added with my newfound shortness of breath has me facing a very painful physical stress monster. There's also a little bit of disappointment that I'm juggling because we finally got to go on a family trip to the Shenandoah Valley where I wanted to hike to see a waterfall. But of course, with my hip pain and the shortness of breath and all the other pains I've been experiencing, it made it practically impossible to hike at all, <laughs> even if it was just in a straight line and not even thinking about hiking uphill anywhere. So instead of just thinking about our little one in the 2D ultrasound format, what do they look like in the 3D format this week? Well, during week 19, there has been so much growth, but our little one is still just under seven inches right now, which is about 17.8 centimeters long, or roughly the length of a zucchini, as seen in the model here. Their kidneys are making urine now, and their hair is starting to come in all over their scalp, even if it's just the fine fuzzy hair. They're also starting to produce a waxy substance called the vernix caseosa, which will cover the entire skin surface. The areas of their brain are starting to specialize in the senses now as well. So when they're born, your little one will be able to taste your milk, smell your hair and your body, and feel your touch. And even so now, if you rub your belly, they should be able to feel your touch. You may even notice that they put pressure to curl up into your hand when you stroke your belly or start kicking when they hear your voice. What's extra cool is that if you are having a girl like we are, that means that her ovaries are already holding six million eggs. That means that you, the pregnant mama, are not only carrying your little girl, but also your future unfertilized grandchildren. How cool is that? Now, before you head to your anatomy ultrasound, make sure you bring yourself a full bottle of water and keep your bladder nice and full so that that technician can see your ovaries and your cervix. And I'm sure you are so excited to finally get to see your little bundle again. Are you worried or did you get worried in your anatomy ultrasound if the technician was to be checking one area of your baby for a little bit too long? Please tell me I'm not the only one by letting me know in the comments below. These videos take quite a bit of time to make, but it would only cost you a second to like this one. To join me next week in this 40 week pregnancy series or the super simplified science of pregnancy, all you have to do is subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you next week.